Big news out of Huntsville today, Alabama A&M University President Dr. Andrew Guinea, uh, not calling it quits, uh, but calling it calling it the, the, the final chapter of a very distinguished career, a story administrator, both at South Carolina State University and at Alabama A&M University, historic gains at the school in enrollment, in capital capacity, endowment, uh, industrial outreach. And so we are privileged to be joined just a few minutes after the formal announcement by Dr. Andrew Hugenity, president of Alabama A&M University. Dr. Hugenity, you say you're not playing golf, um, but I think that there is consensus that anything other than this <laughs> is something you're looking forward to. Well, you know, from a from a number of perspectives, uh, you know, one, I'm 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 so pleased that I've had the opportunity of working uh, at Alabama A&M University these last uh, almost uh, 11 and a half going on 12 years. And prior to that, at South Carolina State, I I just believe and know that uh, our historical black colleges and universities do so much for us as a people and as a nation. And anything that we can do to further those institutions, obviously we want to uh, we want to do that. Uh, the the other part is that you know we we also have uh, personal obligations and family obligations as well. Uh, I've been very blessed to have a wife who has been very very supportive doing all of my uh, career. She's she's given up sometimes what she wanted to do in order to support uh, those endeavors that I have. And now, in addition to my children, uh, the joy of my life, I have grandchildren. And uh, we have another grandchild that's on the way. And so we want to spend some time uh, spoiling our grandchildren uh, <laughs> as much as we possibly can. And to do that while we still have uh, some reasonable health and strength to do it. So it was a it was a personal reason uh, not to play golf, but my golfing game is absolutely horrible. Uh, but to spend more time with with family and doing those things that we have kind of put put aside for all of these years. The announcement was today, so I know it's still fresh for you. Uh, but what as you start to think about and have started to think about this day, what is it that stands out the most for you to say, you know, we got a lot of good work done here. I think this is a good time to stop because there's always there's always something to be done. There's always something to be done. I, we, when I looked at the university and there, there are a couple of things that are very, very important that's coming up. Uh, the university will be 150 years old in 2025. Uh, my original commitment when the contract was extended will take me to 2023. One of the things that you want to do uh, with the university when you have significant milestones uh, such as 150 is to do a major capital campaign. Well, it just so happened that the timing of my departure had I completed my uh, contractual commitment would be in the middle of that. And you can't do a capital campaign in two years. And so uh, for the university's sake, it was important that we make the transition now so that someone can come in, uh, get on the ground running and get a major capital campaign uh, uh, going forward. So that was one of the things that was driving this. Uh, the, the other is that as we exit out of this pandemic that we're in, uh, I know some people are hoping to return to the normal as we knew it, but that norm is not going to exist. Our institutions are going to have to make a significant transformation in order to remain competitive. Uh, and I think that takes a, a different kind of leadership style. You know, uh, I'm I'm accustomed to being a leader of a certain type of institution and dealing with certain challenges, but those challenges are going to be different. And I and I think it takes a different uh, skill set. Uh, and then the other is uh, you you want to always ensure uh, for the love of the university that there is a orderly transition. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen articles that you have written and we all know that. Uh, in our institutions, sometimes we just have uh, turmoil as we move from one administration to the other. I wanted to be sure that as I exited the university, uh, that they would have the time to appropriately go through, do the assessment, um, make uh, and do a search and name a president. 
Um, and so if you, you know, if you're not quote being forced out, then you don't have all these other issues surrounding bringing people back together and working through various and sundry uh, um, concerns that you have. None of that uh, is true here. I'm confident that we have in place uh, a board that I have all of the these uh, support and respect for, a board that works very, very well together to put aside their uh, personal agendas and work in the best interest of the university. And so I wanted to leave at a time when there would be a board uh, that would focus on being sure that the momentum that we have created over the last almost 12 years, that that will be continued. I have a personal uh, personal interest in being sure that there is the proper person that follows me, I'm not saying who that person should be, but I have a vested interest because what you want is someone to come in and continue uh, building the university. And if you don't transition out in an appropriate way, the person has to come in and basically start from ground zero as opposed to taking off from uh, from where we've left. Let's talk a little bit about that transition, um, because you're you're actually going to conclude in uh, following the, 20, the end of the 2021 academic yeah. year. That's correct. What, what does a presidential transition look like and how, and maybe it's unfair to ask, but how do you think A&M specifically approaches it? There are some institutions where the president kind of recommends someone to the board. And there are some institutions where the president said, I don't want nothing to do with it. I'm leaving. Y'all, y'all take care of it. And I don't want to seem like I'm interfering. Um, and then there are some institutions where the search firm drives a lot of the selection process. Is it, is it reasonable to ask how A&M's board will work with you or you work with they to think about what 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 transition looks like and, and who is is prepared and, and who is skilled enough to deal with some of those new challenges, as you said? Mm -hmm. um, the the board, this is this is uh, fairly new to the board. Um, and so they they've had some discussions in the past about what a transition would look like. But I don't think they are there far enough or down the road to make that decision. Um, I, I did in my conversations with our board chair, he's talked about forming a committee. So I assume that they will be um, bringing aboard a search, uh, a search firm. Uh, so that that search firm will assist them in the process of trying to identify uh, an individual. Um, personally, from my perspective, um, you know, there, there are a lot of great uh, potential individuals out there, uh, even potential individuals that would be uh, here in, in the Huntsville area. Uh, but I don't think that it's appropriate as, as a president uh, that you uh, kind of ordain whoever your successor is going to be. Uh, I see the role more as one of advising, a role that uh, would say to the board, these are the things that you should look for, but ultimately allow that board to make that decision uh, as opposed to the president saying, well, I think person A or person B would be the ideal individual uh, to do that. Uh, because, you know, institutions, require different skill sets at different times in its development. Um, and so those skill sets that may have been appropriate and those skill sets that worked quite well with me from 2009 up until now, those skill sets may not be the skill sets that's needed for the university uh, as they move forward um, from 2021 uh, on. So one of the first things obviously the board is gonna need to do is kind of decide uh, what they see as their vision, where it is that they want to see the institution over the next 10, 20 years. And then from that begin to develop uh, the the uh, criteria that they would be looking for in order to get an individual. Uh, but but you can't just say, well, here are the skill sets that person A had. So we want to go and find someone with those skill sets. But that may not be what you need uh, at the university at its uh, at this time in terms of its development. What what would keep you up at night about what the new president or your successor would have to face? Obviously, COVID was number one, but what things extend from that challenge or does COVID complicate uh, for the university's next steps? I think it complicates for the university's next step because right now we don't know what 
uh, how higher education is going to look and and uh, actually be after COVID. We really don't know um, because in many instances we have been forced to uh, do much of what we uh, conduct our business remotely. Our classes have now transitioned primarily to uh, being online. So the question is whether or not uh, we we have students that have the desire to return back to. Uh, total in-person classes, or is there some combination of the two? And and so I think it's going to require uh, an assessment about uh, where the landscape, the higher education landscape is going to be after COVID. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that's there. The other issues uh, is going to be, we still have funding mechanisms and funding issues that have to be addressed. Um, and And so I'm uh, still up at, at night about a person that's going to be able to come in and, and deal with a uh, limited resource institution because that's what we are. And I don't see that changing overnight. I'm encouraged by some of what I've heard, but it's not going to change overnight. We will still be an institution that have to find a way uh, to put the pieces together in order to provide a quality education uh, for our students. Uh, and then there are issues of, of student performance that we've got to uh, got to wrestle with, um, and whoever that person comes in will have to will have to deal with that. So those are just some of the the, the, the ones that will, uh, of course, keep me up at night as we think about who the next uh, person will be. I gotta ask. I know this this might be a little uncomfortable, but how what role, if any, did COVID play in your decision to say, "Yeah, I'm out of here"? Uh, because you know there are whispers throughout the sector that a lot of folks were. I say, you know what? This is crazy. I'm gone. Was it, the it, wasn't, it wasn't COVID. Um, the only thing that COVID did, COVID delayed my uh, decision. I really intended uh, initially to uh, make this announcement back in June. Uh, and I was going to go until the end of um, you know a year from June. But because of COVID, and uh, the uncertainty about starting the semester, I just thought, thought it was too much for the system to absorb the uncertainty of starting a semester, not knowing exactly how that was going to look. And at the same time, also uh, dealing with, uh, you know, a presidential um, retirement. And so we delayed it to, until uh, this point in time to see uh, how things at least settle down. At least we've got our arms around how we think we may be able to navigate uh, to navigate this. But but you know I've I've always been a proponent of the fact that you are never going to accomplish everything that you set out to do at an institution. You could work another hundred years. You're not going to do that. And uh, once you get the institution. Uh, at a point where it is functioning, uh, I shared with um, you know with with our board of trustees today about the strong financial standing, our uh, good academic programs, uh, excellent fundraising. All those areas are, are 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 working well. That is the time to transition. You don't transition at a time when everything is. Um, falling apart and, you know, someone has to come in and resurrect it almost from the dead. That's not the time to transition. You transition when the university is in good stead. Um, and I, I don't like to make comparisons, but if you, if you, if you look at uh, other institutions, you know, the other uh, PWIs, and you find that that's typically what they do. They transition uh, on a high note. We tend to unfortunately transition when the, when we've got issues uh, surrounding it, and, and I did not want that. I uh, wanted to to transition at a time when a person could come in and not have to worry about quote the basics. Now there's always going to be those issues that are are unique to HBCUs, but I didn't want them to come in and have to deal with that. And so um, it was the time I thought to to transition now. And then from another standpoint, personally, you know, I, I realize my age. Um, I, I know that I'm, I'm not uh, as young as I used to be. Uh, God has promised us three scores and 10. I've got those three scores and 10. And so uh, we don't, we don't need to, um, uh, yeah, I know the rest of the promise could be four scores, but 
um, that's that's stretching it. I'd like to do something good <laughs> until we get there. So I, I think it was time. You know, I um, have been at this this thing for about oh, I guess 45, 46 years now. And and so there there comes a time when when you need to move on to a different phase of your life. You've seen the best and worst. You know what it's like when students, alumni, faculty love you. You know what it's like when they hate you. Um, you know what it's like when the board is tough and when the board is supportive. What is the thing that over your career you think you will miss the most about being an HBCU president? Uh, my students. I, I really, really love my students to see them come in uh, and and to see them develop and you follow their careers and you see all of the great and wonderful things that they, they do. Uh, it's, it's just warms your heart to to uh, to see them uh, develop to their fullest potential. And so that's the piece I'm going to miss uh, the most. Uh, this semester was extremely hard. Um, on our campus because we didn't see our students out and about as we normally see them. We didn't have the opportunity to interact with them as much as we would like to. Uh, so that's that's the piece. Um, I have all of my career lived in college communities. Um, from the from the time that I graduated, I've always been in a college community, and so uh, there's something about uh, having youth around and how that continues to inspire and uh, and 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 keep you uh, keep moving in the right direction. Well, I know there's going to be a place where you're always on the hills at Alabama A and M, um, Dr. Eugenie. We thank you uh, for all your work at that institution um, throughout the sector and the example you set uh, for so many in terms of, of administration at a really high and consistent level. And thank you so much for making the time right after this big announcement. We appreciate you, brother. And thank you for what you do. Uh, you know, we need advocates for our institutions and you certainly uh, uh, stand right there at the top of being an advocate for, our, for all of our institutions. And we certainly do uh, appreciate that. And thank you for the opportunity of sharing. Uh, and um, we know that our institutions will continue to thrive. I'm not gonna use the word survive, but they will continue to thrive. And uh, I don't know who the others are, but I will say to my colleagues that are thinking, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and jump. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and jump, just go ahead and jump, you know? And uh, it, it, it was very emotional for me um, because, uh, you know, I've left other positions before, but it was always going on to another uh, similar position. This was different because um, I'm actually retiring uh, from a, a lifetime career. And uh, so that, that becomes a little, little challenging, but um, I'm sure that my grandchildren will make up for it. 